Oh, 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 dude, I was wrong. Taste that. We need to compare the level. <laughs> Here's the thing though, with ice, ice and whiskey, especially in whiskey communities, this is a no-go. Yeah. Don't you dare do the ice and the whiskeys. Why is this? Why are people who are serious about their whiskey, who are lovers, sensual lovers of the whiskeys, why do they think this? Uh, the short answer is because people feel that it changes the whiskey so much that it effectively destroys any real flavor. Can you taste whiskey more without ice? Yes. But do you taste whiskey differently with ice? Yes. Okay, I want to do a little exploration. Yeah, your palate is not actually designed to taste things at extreme temperatures, hot or cold. Right. Certain things are buried and certain things are left behind and accented, so it changes everything. And you sort of water it down a little bit. Yes, you do. But I asked the community of Magnificent Bastards whiskey lovers around the world, if you do drink a bit of bourbon, with a bit of ice, what bourbons are you reaching for? Yeah, you know, I think bourbon's the right call because uh, in my experience of all the different things on the rocks, and that includes Scotch, uh, Canadian, right. Irish whiskey, for some reason, I think it's the new oak. Okay. Bourbon stands up to ice really well. Coming in at number seven. Yes. It's the Evan Williams Bottled and Bond. Wow, we need glasses. This is a travesty. Because it's not see not perfectly clear. Right. I, I saw this video. The guy, I think his name is Jeremy Sears, S-I-E-R-S. -E and he had a video that was titled, How to Make Clear Ice Cubes. I'll put it in the description. Cool guy, I like the video. I just poured one, do we need to keep going? Side by side of a neat versus an ice. Oh, I like that idea. Yeah, so as this gets a little cold, he's gonna do a neat pour of the Evan Williams bottled and bond here. We'll do a little side by side. Boom. Oh, there it is, that just nice, Musty corn, sweet and cherry and oak. Lots of cherry, man. Mm-hmm. Lots of cherry. It's like almost a maraschino. I like maraschino. that one. Now, yeah. on ice, yeah. with it like this, I can still actually smell. Yeah. Pretty well. It's more, very vanilla now. Tamped down the cherry, accented brown sugar. This is fairly budget too, right? Yeah. I like that. It's taking some of those flavors, it's turning them down, and then the flavors that are left have the room. The next one, we got the Four Roses Single Barrel. Oh, far more rich, almost black licorice, far more spicy. Oh, spicy. that's nice. That is spicy. That's got this little ting of a, like a tannic barrel note mixed with a really subtle sweetness that's not so much brown sugar or cherry. Almost floral sweetness, but it's rich. It's still a rich sweetness, so. Mm. It's maybe more molasses than... And it's a little bit more molasses -y is a word. And yeah. then it's also more oaky. You get the more of the barrel tannin on, on the back end there. With the ice, what do we got? Oh, strangely enough, all the sugar disappeared and it went like no, slightly it's, herbal. I think herbal is a good note. Yeah. That's yeah. like garden herbal. Definitely changed it. Toned down a lot of flavors. Left a few for you to find, a, you know, they're not enhanced. They're just not muted like a lot of the other flavors there. It's but, not as barrel spice. But you get you get a different angle on the whiskey. Totally different. Yeah. They, uh, the other one had more barrel spice. The next one, Buffalo Trace. Oh. All right. I, I really like pouring whiskey over a giant ball of ice. Right. It's kind of how, satisfying. How, let me ask you this, because we're doing an ice episode. How often, just in your own being a human, do you actually pull out a thing of ice and do it with the, with the whiskeys there? Uh, when uh, it's summer in Texas, right. I almost only ever drink whiskey on the rocks. Yeah. Unless I'm trying a new whiskey. I have only done it one time, and that was like six years ago. I do it in restaurants a lot. Oh, here's the thing I do. If in a restaurant they don't have a great whiskey selection, yeah. and I just kind of want to have something to enjoy, and other people are drinking cocktails, mm -hmm. I'll drink a whiskey on the rocks sometimes. That floral, clean, fresh buffalo trays. Berries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smooth is the Oh word. yeah, that's just rounded and pretty. I'm and concerned this may become invisible. A little, little bit of spice. It does, yeah, it does tamp down a lot of flavors, but there's a bit there still. It's a uh, more, more of a generic sweetness. This turned into vanilla cream a bit, with yeah. a barrel spice. The, vel the vanilla popped out for sure. Yeah. Um, don't get the barrel spice that you're yeah. getting. So we got the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. You realize it's 105 degrees today, right? No, it's 96. It's 96 with a heat index of 105. Yeah, I don't need an index. I'm a man, Dan. You're an index. I want the real number. If you're sensitive, then this is what it's like. <laughs> if you're an index. 
Man, this is um, this is hot on the nose. That barrel proof is serious. Yeah. Now my experience is I love doing barrel proof on the rocks. Yeah. Because oh, it stands up to it and it stays a high proof for a while. Well, and that's very often the question that comes up. We'll try something that's high proof and the flavors will be so pronounced. We'll, we'll wonder. I wonder if this could stand up to ice. Oh. Earth molasses and barrel spice with a really hot, a high heat coming out of it. Bam. That's, oh, that's a hot cherry. I'm kind of looking forward that's to a hot, the hot cherry version mm, now. Mm, mm. That's 63% alcohol. Hot 63%. Whew. Whew. There's the heat index. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. This is why you pour barrel proof whiskey on the rocks. It opened up the whiskey a little bit. It got drinkable. It's still, probably still at 50 plus okay. percent okay. alcohol. So I'm glad we're getting into the barrel proof stuff. Oh. Because this is what I was hoping for. Mm -hmm. The universal constant of whiskey lovers. It must be had neat or nothing. Yeah. It's like, eh. There are a lot of whiskey out there that are beautiful and it's neat and it's wonderful and it's at as, as it's came out of the barrel. And, but if you want to explore the whiskey, the word, explore that whiskey, there's things coming out of this chilled whiskey that I have never had in the Elijah Craig. I agree. Yeah. Uh, I will tell you that the ice cube looks like a dick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it stays good. Mm. It got more Christmassy, like like holiday spice and vanilla cream. Yeah, I'm getting man, a, that's a there's some butt. there's some cinnamon right in there with that oakiness. Next one, bullet bourbon. Well, I'm gonna go on record as saying this was so popular because people feel like they're more comfortable pouring budget whiskey on the rocks. Well, and I get it because if you're gonna dilute something, you don't want to dilute one of your more expensive whiskeys that are likely to be like a higher proof, a cask drink something. Right. But the, the more budgety stuff, the lower proof stuff, it's gonna get toned down so much, you're gonna be missing a lot. So it's worth an experiment. Maybe it's not for you, that's fine. It's worth an experiment someday on a hot day. Get yourself a nice, fat, dick-shaped ice cube. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is, um, man, it, this is bad to drink this right after the Elijah Craig, because it's coming across as slightly flat and a nice sweetness, but it's a simple sweetness, not a nuanced sweetness and ends with a little barrel burn. Mm. Reasonable and nice and easy. Yeah, a damn decent budget whiskey. Right. Oh, oh, dude, I was wrong. Taste that. Hold on. Uh, I don't know what just happened, but that just got Hold rich on. and complex. There is a very specific flavor that jumped out of the glass yes. after it got chilled. Yes. That got gingerbread. It tastes like that's the diluted chilled one. Yes. Holy, I was very unexpected. A bready cinnamon barrel note that jumps out of that glass. What did I just say? Knob Creek single barrel. Uh, okay, I'm excited about this one. Not shaped like a dick. <laughs> okay, you let it live in there. You don't want to chip the ice. You don't want the small pieces. Oh, classic knob. Oh, it's ironically not as hot as the Elijah Craig. It's not, but much more pronounced. Brown sugar and barrel on that. Oh yeah, much more densely sweet yeah. and rich. Yeah, yeah. All right, ready? Yep. Man, that immediately tasted more oily, even in the sip. Before I started tasting it, it felt more oily. That holds up really well. But That's like an ice cream roundness. Well, but it holds up. I think the- It changes. The, yes, the sweet elements from the neat, I think just the desserty sweet pieces fall by the wayside. Yeah, but it gets rounded. Well, it gets rounded, but the things that are less sweet and desserty, yeah, those get the volume turns up. Yeah, the mash starts to show up, like the grains and the barrel, barrel. spice, yeah. right? But it's surrounded in this oil texture, so it feels like you're eating ice cream almost. Are you ready for the number one? Wild Turkey 101. It lands high on the bourbon list. 101. Respectable proof. Neat pour. Well, it's actually a little more musty grass than the rest of the bourbons. Ah, and it's just kind of round and pretty. A nice, friendly approach and a little bit of barrel spice finish. I'm not gonna say, it's, I'm gonna say it's nicely balanced yes. with the classic flavors that are there. I think this is the least sweet of all the bourbons we've tried up till now. Okay, classic Please. bourbon flavors, still on the neat. I got some caramel, got some of the uh, the oakiness and then a little bit of the, little bit of the brown sugar. I'm not getting cherry and I could imagine an apple bit, but not so much. And I think the price point's usually, you know, mm -hmm. a good value there. Somebody tell Chrissy Martin and the Pritchards that I might be switching to Team Bourbon for the summer. <laughs>
It's sort of like having a, a summer fling at camp when you were in high school. Yes, sweeter. Yeah. More effortlessly interesting. Yes. Effortless, still classic territory. But My favorite of those was Elijah Craig. It was the Elijah Craig. Yeah. I think the 101 is the second place for me. I agree. I noticed that you said the 101 was the number one result. I did? I thought you said that. No, oh, I just said Walter, you're 101. And you said, oh, the number one thing. You know what, what was actually number one? What was actually number one? Because Magnificent Bastards, whenever I ask people specifically, specifically a bourbon you put on ice, you know what the number one result was? What was the number one result? The ice is for your shorts, not the bourbon. <laughs> So what's your what's your schedule? Wait, what's, does, your, what's your schedule look? Does like? it involve shrinkage? <laughs> People are gonna have opinions. They're gonna have preferences either way, yeah, especially about the ice. Especially about the ice. What's rule number one in the tribe? The definition of good whiskey is whiskey you like and the way you like to drink it. That doesn't mean people can't have preferences. We love preferences. You need to develop those preferences. If everyone has the same opinion about everything, that makes a really boring group. People can have preferences, but in the Whiskey Tribe, the one thing we don't stand for, shitting on somebody because of their preferences, that's a no-go. They're a snob, they're the f out of here. The number one result. You're gonna make me crawl into the freezer? No, that would just be juvenile. Oh. So we're all about the A-B comparisons, yeah? yeah? Final comparison for the people. Number one result, ice in the shorts. <laughs> who added that? Hundreds and hundreds of people. Oh, I want to know who added it first. And it wasn't me. We're going to have words. <laughs> Fortunately, I knew. I knew you weren't going to be ready, so oh I, brought, I brought shorts. Uh, the problem with these shorts, though. Oh, God. The problem with those shorts is you can't really see what's going on to confirm the ice is working. They're also huge. Can you open those for me? What in the world is this? Ah, are these the knit shorts that are all over the internet right now? <laughs> That's so see-through. The pictures yeah. that I had to look at in the, in the product. Yeah, the product photos. Even on Ambit, dude. Do you have like a uh, phone booth or something out here? What are you doing to him? What? This is for, this is science. Science, Emma. <laughs> it's got ta it's got metal tassels. Maximum classy. <laughs> when we're shooting a video and Rex can't stop giggling, <laughs> you don't even want to know. He's still wearing the hat. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> now for the A B comparison, I will be partaking in a bourbon on the rock. Okay. This is for me. You need a neat pour. Oh, why? Oh, to see if yes, this yeah, to see if the general body temperature being lowered yes. makes it easier to consume and exactly. eat more of whiskey. The number one result when testing. it's really We're hot. Test the A B testing location. Uh, it's a little warm. <sighs> For science. <laughs> Bring it up. Ah! <laughs> oh, oh. oh God! I've got a front butt. <laughs> We need to compare the level. <laughs> we not just saw you the camera. We need, we need to compare the levels of refreshment. <laughs> They're leaking. <laughs> oh my I can totally hold you. Oh, I can't breathe. <laughs> is it cool and refreshing? I feel like athletes do this right. They sit in ice baths, right? So, very legitimate notes. I think this is ours. I think this is the Eleanor, Eleanor she poured us. You get that oakiness and that brown sugar. A little bit of honey and apple on that. I got a little bit of brown sugar spice. Yeah, I got that. Got a little bit of apple. Yeah. A nice uh, vapory burn. Uh huh. Sure. It's not refreshing. It's not refreshing. Nothing is refreshing. Tribe. <laughs> Did you lead us astray? Yes, so astray. Yeah.